Hi, my name is Gordy Hogue, and this is Community Connection. Each of us have stories, stories that help us understand each other and help to bring our community closer together. I have been very fortunate to have met many interesting people. People who've had a positive, profound impact on our community and far beyond. People who've had incredible life experiences and fascinating stories. Community Connections is about these people and about their stories. I'm sure you'll enjoy meeting these amazing people as much as I have. Thank you. Please enjoy. Welcome to Community Connections. My name is Gordy Hogue, and today's guest is Moti Bali. Moti is a man whose life is, is, is a model of citizenship. From Uganda to Canada, he has lived a caring, giving life, and he's helped our community to be more tolerant and supportive place for each of us to live. Welcome, Modi. Welcome to Community Connections. Thank you, Gordon. It's a pleasure to have you. Can you tell us a little bit about where you were born and your progression from Uganda through education, through Rama, and to Canada? I was born in uh, Uganda, in Tebe, Uganda, uh, 14th of May, 1940. In fact, I celebrated my 80th birthday last May. Uh, my father was a very prominent uh, physician, like uh, uh, your dad, Gordon. And uh, there was a lot of common things between us. I studied in uh, Kampala, went to, uh, uh, to Bombay for my higher uh, university. I did the English and uh, economic special. And uh, while there, I was awarded the best student of the year by the Rotary in Club of uh, Maharashtra, Bombay. And I, I did very well in studies. I got through my BA, <laughs> but I was also, I don't think anyone has beaten the record. I was best postman of the year for three years, best athlete chef for three years. And uh, this is when I met Rama. So, so uh, did your, sorry, did your, tell me about your brothers and sisters as well. How did they help you uh, develop this sense of competitiveness and expertise? Well, uh, we were eight siblings, uh, five sisters and three brothers. Uh, I told my father, I said, you know what, I don't want to go to England. I want to go and to India to study. I didn't want to put too much pressure on my father because going to England was much more expensive. And so I decided to go to India, find out the roots. So I, 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 my father said, son, do whatever you want to. He was most encouraging. In fact, he was my best friend. He used to deliver my love letters to my girlfriend. But he said... <laughs> But he said, son, don't put the old man in trouble. I said, no, dad, I will never put you in trouble. So I met Rama in my final year, fourth year at the university. And we met and uh, came back to Uganda uh, uh, in 1964 after finished my uh, graduation, BA in economics and political and economics. And uh, from there onwards, I was involved. I was a principal of a high school. I taught in City High School, one of the biggest uh, private schools in Uganda. And most of the students were from the army. So all these people, one thing about uh, Gordon, about uh, Uganda and anywhere in East Africa for that matter, the army people respect the teachers very much that you're next to God because children spend half the time with you and you teach them. And uh, Major Marela was a terrible man. Whenever someone went to McKinley prison, never came back alive. So uh, I was also involved uh, with the British government. Mujibai Madwani was imprisoned to frighten all the Asians during the time of Idi Amin. He wanted to tell you milk the cow, so I'm going to get rid of you. So all the people are fleeing the country. And Mujibai told me, Moti informed the British Embassy, there are 40 journalists in the prison here. So when I informed the British government, they said, oh, we're very busy. The first, first secretary did not know me. I knew the British High Commissioner, but they were not in the country, had fled the country. So I said, oh, uh -huh. I have some, yes. Idi, I have some, I have, Idi Amin was your neighbor, wasn't he? He was my next door neighbor. Next door neighbor. Uh, yeah, wow. when he was, yeah, he was he was my next door neighbor. When he was a major general, when he became the president, that was called the command post. Eight Prince Charles Drive was my house, and Edie, I mean, was my next door neighbor. And so you, so, got, to, you got to know him and experience him? 
Oh, absolutely. He told everyone, he's my neighbor. I know him. When Rama used to be in the garden, he used to stop the old entourage, get up, salute, and they will wonder what, what's he doing. But anyway, yes, he was, he was a, uh, not a brave person as such. Very, he was a cook in the army. The British and the Israelis got him into power. They thought he's going to be a puppet. But when the British did not give him the pounds that he wanted, he went to Gaddafi. And Gaddafi said, oh, this is a Muslim country where 85% of the local population were uh, Christians. Yeah. So Israel and Britain got him into power. Wow. Yeah. And, 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 you, and you were a great athlete then. You were playing tennis through those days? And... Yes, I was. I was a top tennis and badminton champion of Uganda. I was also the uh, secretary of Uganda, Uganda uh, Lawn Tennis Association. And uh, Gordon, I also was the first ever person to organize a charity walk in Uganda. Wow. So uh, they, these, the government told me to do, organize. So Milton Oboti was the president and uh, General uh, Amin was head of the army. So uh, it was supposed to be the, the uh, police force coming, band coming first. But uh, Idi Amin brought his army band. So I had to do something, think very fast. And I said, the most important thing is the end of the charity walk. So the, the uh, police force should come there because Idi Amin had already had his army band there. So we, we organized that and it was, it was fun. Uh, it was tough, very tough. So I, in 1973, I came to uh, Canada because there's someone staying at my house from the Canadian embassy. They, they knew me. They said, okay, come to Canada. So in half an hour, I got my medical certificate, everything done. The only thing I could get out of the country, Gordon, was 50,000 shillings into first class ticket around the world and 26 kilos of personal clothing. So at, at that point, had, had Nomita been born, your daughter? Yeah, Nomita was just born. She was uh, two, three months old. And Rama and two girls had gone to India to visit her uncle. And I did not see them for two years until I, when I came here, got a job and I sponsored. And the ticket that I had, the first class ticket, I changed into MCOs. With the aid of that, I was able to get the ticket for them to fly to Canada. How did, and how did you pick Canada as a place to go? And, and I understand your life went, was potentially at risk in Uganda. It was a very frightening and place to, to live and you never knew what was going to happen. So, and, and Rama and Nobita were able to get out, get out of the country and you weren't allowed to go with them, I understand. No, uh, it, it, they had gone for a holiday at that time and they, were, uh, they had left the country. They, they, it wasn't in that turmoil, but as soon as they left, there was all these restrictions. Anyone out of the country could not come back. Ah. And my friend, a very good friend, Hassu Masarani, was helping a lot of people at large. And myself, we were like the Robin Hood trying to get people out of the yeah. prison, and what have you. But no, I uh, then his brother-in-law told me, who was in the army, he says, Moti, I am his relative. I'm scared. You better leave the country. Yeah. So, so that's the reason. And, and of course, Canada was known as the Peace Corps country, peace-loving country. So I thought I took Canada to be the place to come, even though I had a British passport. But, but my passport was D-class, had pro problems going to England. So I came to Canada and my younger brother was in Edmonton. I went to Edmonton and I found it too cold <laughs> because I was used to the tropical climate on equator, Uganda. So I came to Vancouver, which is one of the mildest places in Canada. And, and, you, and, and you lived in North Delta then, did you? Yes, I went to North Delta. We, we stayed there. I got, we bought a house. My brother helped me to get the mortgage. He was a chartered accountant. And uh, of course, Rama joined me here. Uh, we were in downtown Vancouver, moved to North Delta. And in North Delta, we lived six months across a person who's equally bad as Idi Amin, his name was Clifford Olson. <laughs> and did you actually let him babysit for you? Yeah, yeah he did babysit uh, my uh, Numita yeah. and Tina. And uh, they called him Uncle Cliff. I didn't know who Uncle Cliff was. <laughs> but I remember distinctly one day, we called Susie, was running home 
from the school and he stopped the car and said, come on, I'll give you a ride. <clears throat> she said, no, I, I'd rather run home. She had got a very good report and thank goodness we found out what later what he did, yeah. the atrocities he carried out. And you, you picked up tennis again when you came to Canada? You were playing yes, I, yeah, I started playing tennis when I was in downtown Vancouver. I was the uh, captain of the A team of Stanley Park and I started playing tennis. I remember I was playing my first tournament in Stanley Park and there was the president of the Stanley Park uh, club and he was talking to someone and he told him, I overheard him saying, oh, there's a, a, a small East Indian. I'll finish the game in one hour and then uh, I'll, uh, we'll have lunch together. So I beat him, but I could see that he wasn't too happy. He was over six feet tall and I'm just about five, uh, half, uh, five six of, uh, in height. And after I beat him he, in the semifinals, he asked me, he said, uh, come on, I'll buy you lunch. I said, no, thank you. <laughs> And of course, I uh, played tennis and I uh, was responsible in North Delta to build the Sunshine Hill Tennis Court. This is a, during the time of Tom Good, who was the mayor yeah. then. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of things and I enjoyed playing tennis. But then what happened, Gordon, uh, Rama used to get some frightening phone calls when she was expecting our son Rick at nighttime, midnight, asking Rama, what is she wearing? I've got a knife. I know where you live. So this went on. At that time, the, uh, the telephone system wasn't very sophisticated, 1976, 77. So I thought there's some jealousy. I gave up tennis until we came to White Rock. And the reason I came to White Rock is because of a very, one of the first friends we had was Jim Rhodes, who was the chairman of BC Hydro. And he really uh, liked us very much because I played tennis. So I, I came to White Rock and uh, Rick was about 16 and he said, Dad, let's play tennis. I had given up tennis for 16 years. So I went to play tennis. I said, okay, we went to Centennial uh, Courts and of course Jim told me, Jim Rhodes said, become a member of the White Rock uh, Tennis Club. So I remember the first tournament entered, I reached the finals and the lady comes up and says, Moti, she knew me. She used to work at CIBC and I used to work at the CIBC data center. She said, come over, uh, oh, my son's going to beat the pant out of you. I said, look, I've got two pants. They're <laughs> one with one goes, the other one is still there. But anyway, I beat him. Uh, I didn't want to really beat him badly, but I beat him 6-1-6, six, six, love. He did not show uh, the tennis court for the next two years. Oh, okay. But uh, no, it, it's like you play tennis, it's like riding a bike. You never forget how to ride a bike. And you became a, a Canadian senior champion. Yeah, I, I won my provincial and national tennis championship. And uh, I, I won the uh, international tournament in Cowchin, the grass courts. My, most of the time I played tennis was on clay courts in Uganda. But I won on hard court, clay court, and grass court. And uh, I enjoyed by, until about uh, uh, 12 years ago when, when I had five open heart bypasses, right carotid artery, and five stents put in, I gave up playing tennis. And this is why I, then I later said, I'm going to do something. At the age of 54, I took an early retirement. And uh, I met you and Laverne at this Miamo Mall stationery uh, store. There used to be a stationery store. I, I introduced myself to you and I went to your office to say who I was, where I've come from. And ever since that time, you've been my mentor. I remember uh, meeting you at the office at City Hall and you were telling me about Idi Amin being your neighbor in Uganda. And yes. And Olson, your neighbor in, in North Delta. And I said, well, who's your neighbor now that you moved to White Rock? And I think you said, well, with that history, I've been afraid to ask. Yes. <laughs> but you've had many, many great neighbors in your no, We had some great neighbors, but they sold the house. I think the house had been bought by uh, some residents outside the country. It's empty. It's been empty for the last four or five years. But no, I'm, I'm glad and um, I, I, I have been involved in the community here because I feel I pitched my tent here. I feel so secure that look this, I call this as my home, my homeland. And, and the reason I do things, I, as I said, I retired at the age of 54 and a half. I got a golden handshake. I was the, the supervisor of the midnight shift at the CIBC data center. But when, when I first came here, Gordon, I was security guard for Pinkertons. I, 
taught tennis at uh, in Langley Adult Education. I uh, did a, a New York Life Insurance during the daytime. The more I worked, the more income tax I paid. I said, well, they, <laughs> because I wanted to have the same lifestyle I had in Uganda, but that wasn't possible. So I just gave up and yeah. And you became involved in volunteering for many things in the community. You, you volunteered for some committees with, uh, with the city of White Rock. I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, I'm one of the longest serving committee members of the city of White Rock in the committees. I've done for 15 to 20 years. And we moved to White Rock in 71, 91, sorry. And uh, no, I was, I've been involved with the community in Bloom. I was a chairperson. I've been involved with uh, 2D White Rock. I've been involved with the uh, Sea Festival, any function, including hospice. I took the palliative care in hospice. First, the, the uh, counselor told me, said to everyone in the class, when you go inside the palliative care place on sixth floor in Peace Arch Hospital, leave your ego behind. When I took my second palliative care, I, I told the counselor, you forgot something. He said, what, what did I forget, Noti? I said, you said to put your ego behind when you enter, but you forgot to say to leave your attachments behind when you leave the palliative care. <laughs> because, because you tend to get attached to the people. Yes, you do. And you also uh, were instrumental in getting a celebration of cultures in our community and instrumental in getting that started and a recognition of... Uh, an inclusive, caring community. Do you want to talk a little bit about your work with that? Yeah, I was. Uh, this is about four or five years ago. We had for three years uh, the, the community, the Festival of Lights, Diwali function, which we brought all the different cultures together. But Diwali is usually in October, November, and the weather, uh, we had the mercy of the Almighty God. So I thought that uh, talking to you, I thought the best way to get all these different cultures to get together and have a multicultural society. And that's the reason I gave up the uh, thing in Diwali because now I am Canadian. I wanted to teach, uh, learn, and at the same time teach people how to uh, respect each other. And I will tell you, Gordon, when I was very surprised when you became MLA for the first time, you were decorating, and I told you this blue balloon with a red balloon and he said, Moti, I'm colorblind. I said, won't this world be beautiful if everyone was colorblind? Yes. Yes, you made many contributions in, in many ways. Talk a little bit about uh, about the multicultural celebration and the, the, the turnout for that and, uh, and how people have really celebrated what it is to be Canadian and, and pluralism and engage with each other. And that's a, a value you've brought and helped to emphasize in our community. Unfortunately, we were, go we we're going to be holding the first community cultural uh, function on the 14th of August this year. Yeah. Due to COVID, it's not possible. But I have been doing through the uh, Festival of Lights, teaching people different cultures on the stage. And you we were one of the instrumental person there, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, Festival of Lights in Gordon. We had the Russians, the Chinese, the whole different cultures coming, celebrating the Greek uh, and, and the uh, Scottish dancers. They wanted to learn from each other and respect to know, listen, guys, everyone is important. Even my little one contribution, I feel at, at the end of the day, I feel so happy that I've accomplished something. I'm at the moment involved feeding the needy in the city of White Rock. And uh, last week, the father came because the, the father used to come with the daughter about seven, eight years old. And I asked, oh, where is she? He said, oh, she's got uh, allergies. She cannot come. So I get the food. And she, she sent me a nice card saying, thank Mr. X, thank you very much for the delicious food. It, you know, it, it, it brought tears to my, when you see these needy people getting food and they're so humble, humility and gratitude are so important to me. And don't those people have, uh, it seems that everyone we meet in some way has an impact on us and uh, and affects us so as you're describing your giving and your caring and how much you get back from those people that you give to and how much that develops a relationship and a and a sense of a sense of commitment to each other what i get from that is is the feeling of fulfillment at, and, and, and the, at, at the end of the day at night when i go to sleep i feel so ble blessed that someone says oh i'm going to pray for you multi some that don't know who i am but they, uh, someone told me the other day, he said, are you Italian? I said, no, I'm not. 
He said, I'm three generation ten. You look like one. I said, take me as I am. <laughs> no, but uh, no, I am, I am a person of the, I, I am a Hindu by religion, but my heart is my temple, my mosque and my church. And love is my religion. I care. And that is to me the utmost thing. I care and I respect. And I think that's someone that uh, some characteristics and values that go across all cultures and all people, no matter what their religion or background or history is, those people who are committed to caring evidence the same type of behavior that you're talking about. And I think there's that, that sense of sameness or commonality that exists around the world that gives, gives us some confidence that our world uh, can be a better place than it is now. Absolutely. Every, every little bit that one can contribute, the people who are constant complainers, they don't even vote. They do not do any civic or community work, but they were criticized. If they can get off their backside and share a little bit that they have, it, this world be a much better place. We Canada is much better. It's one of the best countries in the world to live in. Of course, White, White Rock is the best in BC, and BC is the best in Canada. In Canada, perhaps one of the best in the world, if not. Yes. Talk a little bit about uh, about Rama and about your children and and the contributions, because certainly you couldn't have been doing the things that you've done in our community without the support of your family and particularly of Rama. Rama is a fantastic cook. And when I was playing tennis and running errands around, she looked after, she single-handedly brought the children up and she often complains at times that more do you do more for the people outside than for the house here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I agree with that, but she has been of great help and so are the kids. Uh, my eldest daughter, Works of the work, uh, manager uh, the work save. My second daughter works on the justice department in Victoria. And Rick, our youngest, who's still not married, is 42, 40, coming 43. And so I asked him, When are you going to get married? He believes in get married when you're good for nothing. <laughs> he, he's, he's the regional manager for manager of BC for worst uh, management. And uh, they, they're all very, very caring. They will not allow us to go outside the house because of the COVID. And uh, Rama has been instrumental in getting everyone together, the family together. And my father-in-law, uh, who unfortunately my, passed away, was the principal secretary to Julius Nerere, who visited us here in 19, 14th of May, 1995. So we, we have a lot of history being involved with these peoples, but I have come to the conclusion, seeing what's going on, uh, Gordon, that I'm not affiliated with the Rotary Club, even though they gave me their Paul Harris. Uh, I uh, And of course, I was given the, uh, one of the best residents of Peninsula, along with Cliff Annabelle, late Cliff Annabelle. I, I do not want to be affiliated with any political party. I will respect, vote for whoever is good for the community as individual, as your good self. You have done a lot. I'm still learning. But the only thing different between you and I is your doctor hog now. I have to buy that degree from the United States. So if you had some uh, some messages to, to give to uh, future generations, messages that you would uh, want people to live by, what would those messages be given what you, the way you've lived your life and the contributions you've made? Would there be some message that you'd hold on to that you'd want to pass on to future generations? I would like to say that this is the opportunity you have to get yourself enrolled in the community, give you 100%, with, show your humility, show that you care, and, and go out of your way to help a, a needy person, at the same time, with no expectations. You do it from the your heart, your feeling, heart and soul. And to that, at night when you go, you have such a wonderful sleep. You feel so blessed that there's nothing in the world. But I will also like to say, the people who volunteer in all the events in the country, they're giving their time. No one can buy time. Even the rich of the rich cannot buy half an hour before he dies, not even a minute. To, to, to me, that is of utmost importance, respect, Love, understanding, mutual understanding is something that 
they have to learn and experience. So when you were going to the university and studying, were there some philosophers or some people you studied who were a bit of a role model for you, people that inspired you to this way of life? Or was that your, mostly your father and, and growing up in the family? Or a it was, yeah, it was my father. I used to carry his bag. We used to, when he used to go uh, visiting his patients in Uganda, not, I learned, not only did he not charge his patients for medication, but he gave them money for food and medication. And he always said, son, Having a hand like this is better than having a hand like under. It is one of the greatest satisfaction to have. And he was my role model, my mentor, my best friend. And unfortunately, he passed away on my birthday, 14th of May, 1962, when I was in Bombay. A wonderful guy. And I have no words to express what a great, great human being. When he passed away here, I wasn't there. There was thousands of people of all caste, creed, and religion came to pay their respect. And I'm sure he's very proud of the accomplishments that you have made and the contributions that you have made in, in his memory in many ways, but certainly living up to uh, the role model that he was for you and for your family. Absolutely, but the only, the, the only thing that I, uh, I was not able to do is I wanted at one time, when I finished my education or started working, I wanted my father to say, Dad, you respect now, sit down, rest, I will work. Yeah. But I didn't get that opportunity. And this is why I feel more to do for the people who are not able to. I'm there for everyone and anyone, no matter who. When I do something, someone comes up and says, oh, how can I re repay? I said, yes, you can. I said, how? Pass it on. And what a great message. Modi, you're, a, you're an inspiration and just a wonderful citizen. We're proud to have you in our community and, and so grateful for the many contributions that you make. And thank you so much for being a guest on Community Connections. You're thank you, Gordon. To I look up to you. I look up to you every time. And you're a great mentor. Thank you for joining us today on Community Connections. Please tune in to our next show as more amazing people share their wonderful stories. If you haven't already, please click on the red subscribe button below, right down there, and view our updates. Feel free to leave any thoughts or comments that you may have. We're always trying to do a better job of connecting this wonderful people. Thanks again for joining, and until next time, keep connecting. Thank you.